Scripture teaches us that no man is perfectly righteous, and that certainly that no one can do more than his duty to God. Quote, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, unquote. And quote, in thy sight shall no man living be justified, unquote. Quote, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do, unquote. But the Council of Trent, on the contrary, asserts that the good works of the just, the good works of the justified man, his fasts, alms, and penances, really deserve increase of grace and eternal life, and that God is willing, on account of his most pious servants, to forgive others. It teaches that a man may do more than is requisite and may give the overplus of his good works to another. Now let me make a comment. This is, understood, this is misunderstood by many people. The Roman Catholic Church teaches that Mary and the saints were so virtuous that they performed more, many more good works than were necessary to save themselves and that the overplus of their good works, the surplus of their good works, the extra grace that they earned (laughs) is stored in a bank somewhere, an invisible bank somewhere, and it's overflowing with extra grace earned by Mary and the saints of the Roman Catholic Church and the apostles and all the patriarchs of the Bible And all of that grace is held in a big, invisible savings account, and the Pope's got the key. So if you come to the Pope and you've committed a grievous sin, like many of the Popes has, like incest or murder or regicide or, well, let's just leave it there. If you pay enough money, the Pope can get his secret little key and unlock that bank of grace, that invisible bank of grace, and make a withdrawal in your behalf and credit that grace to you. And not only to cover sins that you've committed in the past, but to commit any sin you want to commit in the future, too. It's called an indulgence. And it is absolutely diabolical. Absolutely diabolical. It was the very thing that brought about the Protestant Reformation. Martin Luther was so incensed. Martin Luther, even though he were a Catholic, a monk in the Roman Catholic Church, and bound on threat of excommunication to believe that those indulgences were perfectly lawful, he rebelled and announced to the whole world what an incredible sin indulgences were. And that that alone was enough to spark the Protestant Reformation. All he did was tell the truth. And he let the chips fall where they may. And as a result of the Protestant Reformation that came out of the controversy having to do with indulgences, all of Europe was liberated. Nearly all of Europe was liberated from papal tyranny. But guess what? We've forgotten the Protestant Reformation. Protestantism is almost dead in this country. Nobody can tell you, nobody in the non-Roman Catholic churches can tell you what indulgences were. They couldn't even tell you what Martin Luther was all about. They can't even tell you what Protestantism represents, though they call themselves Protestants. Or many who are even ashamed to call themselves Protestants today might just call themselves evangelical or 
the emerging church or some other name. But we owe a lot to the truth. We owe a lot to Martin Luther, and we need to return to the faith of Protestantism. It is the faith of Jesus Christ, Protestant because it protests Antichrist. It protests the papacy. It protests the Roman Catholic Church. It protests the Vatican. It protests false miracles. It protests indulgences. It protests priest pedophilia. It protests a diabolical history of the popes, the sins committed by that church. It protests the crusades, the inquisitions, the martyrs of Jesus, whose blood has been shed for centuries now at the hands of this man of sin who calls himself the replacement of Jesus Christ on the earth. 